let's talk about data sufficiency for for a sure. minute, right? So I actually think that this is a really fun part of the exam. It's the part where you could you could be like you're a spy or a detective. It's not the part of you who is just a math cruncher, a number cruncher. Yes. So for those of you listening, like this is interestingly, like this is this part almost reminds me a little bit of the game section, which has been removed from the LSAT, but it's, do you have enough information to answer the question? And I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. The way, the way I think about it, Brett, is it, it gives you the opportunity to show that you can think outside of the box, that you're not a big, like reckless risk taker, that you don't actually have to come up with an answer. You just have to see if you have sufficient Correct. data. Right. And it moved sections, right? It was in the it was in the math section and then it moved over. It's no well, longer on the executive part. assessment, it's still paired with problem solving. That's Which right. Which is super part. interesting, I it think, is. that they they've really wanted to differentiate the tests, and there is slight, slight different flavors, but they're still like in the chocolate family. Like right. one is mint chocolate chip and one is chocolate chip. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and let me sort of, again, I like, I like the 30,000 foot view as people are trying to make this decision. The reason I think we're talking about data sufficiency here is remember sort of big picture. Each of the exams has a unique math question type. I talked about on the GRE side, it's called quantitative comparisons. On that exam, you're comparing information in two columns, basically, two quantities and determining which one's bigger. Column A is bigger, column B is bigger, they have the same value, whatever. On the GMAT and executive assessment, it's this data sufficiency, which we're going to keep talking about here. And a big decision point is, do I like quantitative comparisons or data sufficiency better? Because if a lot of the math is the same, if you have to answer word problems and a lot of the problem solving is the same, that becomes a major differentiator on the quantitative reasoning side of things, although as Barra suggested, data sufficiency is now, now not even part of the quant section on the GMAT. And for the longest time, I would steer people actually, and we're not trying to steer you one way or the other, but, well, I wouldn't steer anybody anywhere, but my students tended to think that quantitative comparisons on the GRE is actually easier the data sufficiency on the GMAT and executive assessment. Before I go further, has that been your experience, Farah? Like, do your students find quantitative comparisons or data sufficiency easier? You know, it's funny because that doesn't wind up being the deciding factor as much as some of the verbal. Good point. Okay. You know? Yeah. But Are you I better? Find, okay, good. Yeah. I find that, and when it comes down to it, the quant comparison for the US-based clients, remember it from SATs. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So it's a different, it's a different beast. And it just it also depends on if the student is really allied with this myth that you need the GMAT for business school, right? Sure. Sometimes I find I need to I need to remind them that you actually can take and really, 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 you could take either one. Which do you feel better at? Which are you scoring better? So I don't, I don't get into that much of a struggle. I think that like stepping back, I do think that data sufficiency is a little bit more, um, it's a little more slippery yeah. than quantitative comparison. And but it's once you figure it out, it, yeah. it clicks. Once you yeah. get it to click, and this is my encouragement, it might take a while, but you will get there. And when it clicks, you'll wish there were more of them. Yeah. yeah. And they're fun. Yeah. They're fun. That's it. So let's keep talking about it because I think the way you described it is good. You're determining sufficiency. The way I like to think about it and describe it to my students is a traditional math word problem I think about as like a pyramid. It starts with, um, sorry, an upside down pyramid, traditional word problems, the math you've done your whole life. It's an upside down pyramid. You have all of this stuff at the top, all of the data. Um, train A travels east at 45 miles per hour. Train B heads west three hours later at a rate of blah, 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 blah. And it's giving you all this information and funneling it down to your question. The question's at the bottom. At what time will they meet up? Okay. And then you hopefully, you have all the information you need can you use that information and answer the question? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but but that's the objective. Data sufficiency is the exact opposite. It's like a normal pyramid and it starts with a question. 
what time will train A and train B meet? Uh, I don't know. You have to tell me something. <laughs> oh, okay. Statement one. Train A leaves heading east at 45 miles an hour. Uh, not enough information. I need to know something about train B. And, and so they're like filling in the information that maybe you can use to answer that question in the statements. And you're simply determining, ah, I still need more information. Ah, I still need more information. Or, oh yeah, I could use that. I can find out what time they're going to meet. And so it's just a really cool way of sort of thinking about it. It's an inverse way of thinking about math. You still have to know some stuff. But again, sort of once it clicks, it makes a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. And the one final thing I would say and just sort of add to the mix is when the GMAT underwent its revisions late last year and then formally it's the only GMAT available now this year, uh, the GMAT Focus Edition, it has introduced a non-math data sufficiency type of question, which is more logic-based as well. And so perhaps, Mara, that's one of the reasons why they also moved it out of the quant section, put it in data insights, because, yeah, most of the questions are still math-based. What time will train A and train B meet? And maybe you have enough information, maybe you don't. But sometimes it's like, more like the logic games you brought up the LSAT. It's like, which, which <clears throat> I don't know, which, uh, which toy did elf C make, you know? And it's more logical reasoning based in trying to answer that question. And so those can be fun as well. I, I want to I just piggyback on one thing that you said, which is that, and I, I, I sort of mentioned this before, which is when you are, in the data sufficiency and you are not required to actually have an answer, you have to resist the dopamine hit to get an answer. Good point. You know, so you have to, it's an interesting process to go through because they're not asking for the answer. They're just asking whether you have enough information. Yeah. And so it's an interesting psychological movement for some of the questions to move through.